Hey everyone, we're going to look at some sub-D modeling, uh, kind of uh, the, the how-tos and the do-nots and the uh, do-whatever-works kind of workflow. So let's look at this set of boxes right on the side here. So sub-D modeling is, is simply using a low-poly object in its smooth version or smooth form uh, we've got this actual shape which is this cube and once we use the NERM subdivision we can see that it smooths it out at this point we can still edit this while it's in the smooth version okay by using these these selection tools at the bottom once you click that on it brings up this yellow or this orange cage which allows you to you know, go in and move around some verts right? or use any of the modeling tools that we've used up to this point maybe I can grab some edges here and say connect and we can connect and then pinch those out to the sides right? and you can see what it does it starts making more of a tube like shape or a barrel shape instead of just a sphere and that's because we've got these new supporting edges that I'm just adding in here. Okay, so usually whenever you've got extra geometry on something, it's going to pull this smoothed out mesh closer to the original mesh shape. We can see that by looking at a few examples. Okay, we've got a simple, a simple cube, one edge along each side and we can call these the crease edges okay one crease edge here one here and that's the kind of result we get basically a perfect sphere if we move over you can see that we've got a simple chamfered box so all the edges have been selected and then a chamfer has been placed on it and we get this type of result. Let's just look at it here. All right, so it's chamfered out. Now because we've got two edges showing as opposed to only one edge, we've got quite a difference in shape. You know, one's a sphere, one is definitely a cube. Although it does have rounded edges. Right? And that's because we've got well, again, we've got we do have more mesh density here, so we do have more or a, a closer likeness to the actual shape. If we go one step further, remember this one has one, this has two edges, this one has three edges now. Okay, so it's got this kind of crease edge and then the two supporting edges on top and bottom. So you can see that's a much tighter highlight. It's a much uh, closer representation of the low poly. It, it gives a very nice rounded edge to it. This is all right, uh, but most of the time you're going to want something like this. Uh, you know, if you're looking uh, at anything that's uh, similar to the original shape. Now, if we look well, a further step, remember it's all about edge density or the mesh density because we've got another box here that has you know we've got one two three four edges on one side well it's exactly the same here one two three four but look at the displacement or the sorry the uh, distribution of it you've got even distribution of these polys you have nowhere near even distribution over here this face is the same size as the rest well, this face is much larger than anything else on here. Okay, so we've squeezed up all these all these edges up to the corners, which gives us a tighter, smooth version. Now, looking at this version, because the mesh is evenly distrib uh, distributed, we've got a very uh, evenly distributed smooth on here. So we don't have tight corners, but we've got nice flowing rounded corners. Now. You know, it's very marshmallow-like. If if that's the look you're going for, that's fine. That's great. But you can definitely see that even with the same amount of edges, you can get different looks. It's all about where you place those edges. 
right? We place these edges closer to the edge. These ones are very evenly spaced out and, you know, basically in the middle. Okay, so I'm just going to show you something else now uh, using the same types of, uh, of techniques as that. We're going to create a simple plane. Okay, so it's got only one length uh, length segment and width segment. And we might as well make it the same size. So, or this, uh, a square, I should say. Okay. So we are going to... Actually, let me uh, delete that. I'm going to make something else here. Let's make a cube. Something maybe like that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, convert to editable poly. Let's bring up one of those sides. Something around that, that height. Let's inset. Okay. Somewhere about there. And hit OK. Uh, now let's try extruding somewhere about like that and hit OK. All right, at this point we've got something that resembles maybe a nail polish container or a perfume bottle or something along those lines. Maybe more like that, I guess. Okay. So let's try adding that NERMS modifier, or the NERMS subdivision to it, see what happens. And we'll maybe make three smooth iterations on that. Okay, I mean, that looks nothing like a nail polish bottle when you smooth it. Okay, now let's go back and look at what it actually looks like. Okay, so it's, it's following along the same type of principles as we've got here right where it's only one edge one edge and so it tries to smooth it out 